In our last video about biochemistry, we explored a little bit about an introduction of lipids and fatty acids. But throughout this video, I want to start talking about the different classes of lipids, phospholipids, and molecular backbones that we see in our lipids in the cell membrane. Moving forward and talking about the different lipids, we got to remember that the most simplest lipid is our fatty acid, having that carboxylic acid region and the hydrocarbon chain. This merger of polar and nonpolar regions gives the fatty acid an amphiphatic character, which influences why it forms membranes and vesicles, as we had mentioned before. Yet yeah, throughout this video, we're going to focus on the different subclasses of lipids that we see in biochemistry. And truly, they all range from different molecular backbones that the lipids are attached to. Hopefully, throughout the contents of this video, we can dive into glycerol lipids, sphingolipids, and phospholipids, starting with glycerol lipids. Glycerol lipids are one of the first lipid types that we learn about when we start learning about the different types of lipids in our cells. Glycerol lipids have a molecular backbone of glycerol that the fatty acids are attached to through an ester linkage. When we talk about the variation of glycerol lipids that we find in the body, it's usually a variation of where the fatty acids are attached and how many are attached. For example, a really common lipid is DAG that we see in the cell, and that is composed of two fatty acids bonded to the glycerol backbone. Glycerol lipids that have a fatty acid attached to every single one of the three positions on the glycerol are triglycerides, and there are a glycerol lipid that's used for fat storage. But throughout this video, I want to focus on the different lipid types that we see in the membrane-bound organelles and the cell membrane. It actually works as a perfect transition to our next class of lipids I want to talk about. A class of lipids we find the most in our cell membrane. The phospholipid. Where glycerol lipids were defined by the molecular backbone that the fatty acids are attached to, phospholipids have a different defining trait. Phospholipids are defined by the fact that the lipid has a phosphate located on the polar head group of the lipid. For example, taking it back to glycerol lipids, we can have a phosphate on the third position on the glycerol. Through a phosphodiester bond, we might have another variation of different head groups that could be attached to that phosphate. But we don't just see phosphates on glycerol lipids. For example, sphingol lipids have a different molecular backbone and we can see a class of phospholipids that are attached to sphingolipids. It actually works as a pretty good example of the different groups that can be attached to the phosphate on these lipids. You see, when we look at the glycerol phospholipid, in this case we have the most simplest attachment to the phosphate, just a hydrogen. But when we look at the sphingolipid, it actually has an R group connected to it. And this R group can change depending on the lipid. This R group is attached to the phosphate through that phosphodiester bond. Moving forward in future videos, we might talk about how different enzymes such as kinases or phosphatases regulate phosphates on our lipids and how it impacts the biochemistry of some pathways. Let's segue into the next class of lipids. We mentioned them briefly when we talked about phospholipids and how that there's different lipid types with different molecular backbones. But sphingolipids have a molecular backbone that is a sphingoid base, which is 2-amino-1,3-diol. So while glycerol lipids had a glycerol backbone where the fatty acids were attached to, in this case, all our hydrocarbons or lipid components are going to be attached to a molecular backbone of the sphingoid base. About this collection of talking about lipids, one thing we've been repeating time and time again, the properties about lipids, it's the merger of the polar and non-polar parts that make the lipid what it is, give it the properties to form bilayers and structures in the cell. When we look at a sphingolipid, we see those properties too. The sphingoid base provides that polar head group and the carbon chain extending from that base is the non-polar region kind of like what we saw with the fatty acid, where the fatty acid had a carboxylic acid polar head group. 
Interesting enough, there's different versions of sphingolipids that we see. Some actually include stanchions of fatty acids. For example, the most common sphingolipid that we have is the hydrocarbon extending off of that sphingolipid base. The base providing the polar head group and the hydrocarbon the non-polar region. The hydrocarbon can be saturated or unsaturated, which we've seen with fatty acids. But a different version of sphingolipids is where we attach a fatty acid to the nitrogen of the sphingolipid base through an amide bonding. This is what we call a ceramide. Let's recap. We've talked about fatty acids in the last video. We talked about glycerolipids, phospholipids, and now sphingolipids. Now we can start to see how all these terms help us classify the lipids we're talking about. For example, we have that simple sphingolipid, where we have the sphingoid base and the extending hydrocarbon. In this case, we have a phosphate connected to the sphingoid base. So it's a phospholipid and a sphingolipid because it has a phosphate, but the molecular backbone is a sphingoid base. So look at this another example. In this case, we have a phosphate connected to the sphingoid base of a sphingolipid, but there's actually a fatty acid attachment through an amide bond to the sphingoid base. So this is both a phospholipid, a sphingolipid, and then within the classes of sphingolipids, it's a ceramide. This organization of lipids helps us spot differences and characterize different types of lipids. For example, let's look at this lipid. Here we can see that it has a glycerol backbone, it has a phosphate attached to it, and it has a fatty acid attached to the second position on the glycerol. But that first position looks a little strange. Instead of it being a fatty acid, it's actually an ether linkage. So this is within the group of glycerol lipids. It's a phospholipid, but a defined class of glycerol lipids called ether lipids because of the defining ether linkage on the first position of the glycerol. Well, I hope this short video focusing on glycerol lipids, sphingolipids, and phospholipids helped with your future studies of biochemistry and defining lipids. In future videos, we're going to talk about glycolipids that are have sugars and steroids that help in membrane rigidity and more. Thank you so much. And remember, all these infographics that you see me use throughout this video can be downloaded for free over on my website, so when you're re-watching, you can follow along. Best of luck! Thank you.